This is the vapor recovery presentation. The seventh out of 12 training modules in the underground storage tank class A and B operator training program offered by the New Hampshire Department of Environmental Services. This presentation is narrated by retiree Spruce Wheelock. Over the stage one, the equipment of course, what's being, need, being done regarding to ins our inspections, testing, and of course, Record keeping. What is stage one? Well, stage one deals with your delivery truck, truck delivering your fuel of gasoline, dropping your product into your regulated underground storage tank. The vapors in your underground tank now go back to the tanker truck and therefore preventing vapors from going out into the atmosphere. The whole intent of vapor recovery is to minimize gasoline vapors in our atmosphere. The type of equipment for stage one vapor recovery consists of your drop tube, where product is dropped through the drop tube into your underground storage tank. This opening is not supposed to be any greater than six inches off the bottom of the tank. And the reason for that is to minimize splashing and vapors. It also cuts down on static electricity. The next equipment is your adapter cap. The adapter cap is on top of your fill to prevent vapors from expelling out into the atmosphere when you're not filling the tank. The third item is your vent cap. Now for gasoline, vent caps are pressure rated and vacuum rated. And the reason for that is it maintains the vapors in your tank when you are delivering product or when you're dispensing product to your vehicles. That is the equipment for stage one. Two point delivery hint basically means you have two access points to the top of the tank where one is for a product being delivered into your underground tank and a second location where the vapors are taken out of your tank back to your tanker truck. This is a two-point delivery system. Whereas a coaxial delivery means that the product is all delivered down in one location where the product is, goes down in through the drop tube. The vapors now come up on the outside of your drop tube back to your tanker truck. That is a coaxial delivery method. Hint, if there's contamination during a delivery, such as the example here, we got dripping down on the concrete pad from these loose connections. FYI, that contamination is on your property and that's something that you have to deal with. It's your contamination. Granted, there is some responsibility by the delivery company, but ultimately it's, pro it's contamination on your property that you need to deal with. You own it. We do not want to release vapors to the atmosphere. That's why we have vent caps. Oops. Uh, let's see, we're missing the cap on that and all the innards in that. So it makes a perfect rain funnel. And of course we don't want water uh, getting into our gasoline. And we'll talk about that in another, another module. So we wanna make sure that we have our caps on our fills to keep the vapors within the tank. If we got water or product in the spill bucket when we clean it out, do not put it in a five gallon pail or whatever and let the gasoline evaporate into the atmosphere. No, no, no. You're not supposed to take that product and water and dump it down a storm drain or on a concrete pad or just anywhere. We are trying to keep the gasoline out of the atmosphere and out of our environment. Yearly annual maintenance inspection is required for gasoline and gasoline only. There are two ways you can be done. You can do the maintenance inspection or you can do the annual pressure decay test, which a few facilities are doing. 
If you're doing the annual maintenance, you need to replace drain valves if you have those. Or you could permanently plug it, which quite often a lot of facilities do because they do not want to have water in their underground tanks. And the reason why we need to replace that drain valve is this is New England. We use salt and sand during the winter. It blows around, gets into your spill bucket, and wedges this valve open. Well, if the valve is wedged open with sand and grit, then vapors are con continuously coming out into the environment. It's bypassing our, our vape recovery system. So what's required for our annual maintenance inspection? Well, everybody's doing an, an AB monthly visual inspection for all regulated facilities. Okay, check, we got that. Drain valves need to be replaced or permanently plugged as I was said, said in the last slide. Adapter cap. We cannot have your cover for your spill bucket and your adapter cap in contact. Well, if a truck drives over, a car drives over this cover and these are in contact with each other, well, that squashes the cap and possibly breaks it. You no longer have a seat tight, airtight seal. Worst uh, scenario would be if this was pushed down on your drop tube. Now, a lot of drop tubes have a point on them. Well, we do not want to drive the end of this point of this drop tube down through the bottom of your tank. That would cause a, a release to the environment. We don't want to have a leaky underground tank. And the last item is you want to measure that drop tube, make sure it's within that six inches off the bottom. Just for your own information, this does not have to be done by a contractor, your maintenance inspection. You could do this. Okay. Well, drop tube might be a little more difficult. No, not really. Most everybody has what they call is an inventory stick. Well, if you take a screw and you screw it in on the side of that inventory stick, you can drop your inventory stick down to the bottom of the tank, measure it, pull it up, and that little screw catch on this high point here. And you can measure the distance between the bottom of the tank and this high point. Just an easy way to do that without removing the actual drop tube. So it might save you a few dollars. Testing is every three years for facilities that are dispensing mortar fuel, all facilities. Now for gasoline, if you're over that 100,000 gallons or you're a decommissioned site, you also have to test your vent cap on top of doing your three-year testing of pressure decay. So if you're over that 100,000 gallons or you're a decommissioned site, you gotta remember to do a vent cap test. What is stage two? Stage two consisted of the vape recovery equipment that was designed to remove the vapors from your automobile as you're filling it and putting the vapors in your underground storage tank. It was decommissioned because ever since 1996, all automobiles have what they call as a charcoal canister. That charcoal canister deals with the vapors in your automobile tank. Well, that charcoal canister and the stage two equipment didn't work well together. And since all our vehicles or most of our vehicles in good old Rust Belt, New England, are newer than 1996, EPA has allowed us to decommission the stage two equipment, which is a win-win for you facility owners because the stage two equipment was extremely expensive to install, maintain, and test every three years. So that is a win-win factor. How do I know if I had a stage two vape recovery system? Well, to determine if you are a stage two decommissioned site, you go on to one stop, which they cover in another module, and you look up your facility, report these icons across the top, and you see vapor recovery. 
if you click on that icon, it will pull up and say you are a decommissioned site or if you're exempt from vapor recovery. If you are required to do testing, you need to notify us seven days prior to on this form. And the reason for that is we have our state inspectors come out during the testing to witness it, to help the tester and you possibly get a passing test and direct you what needs to be done. And of course, after the test is done, you need to submit the results to us within 30 days. Hint, record keeping. It doesn't matter if this is gasoline, Basically, any testing that you have done at your facility, not repairs, but testing, you need to submit that information to us within 30 days. But the records need to be kept for three years at a minimum. Life of this system, though, if you install something and you want to sell your facility, the owner wants to know what he's buying. So we need you to maintain the installation information and pass it on to the new owner. I like to know what I would be buying if I was buying a site. So hint, all records minimum kept for three years. So vapor recovery deals with just gasoline. The stage one dealt with what? The product being delivered to your underground tank and the vapors in your underground tank going back to their tanker truck and he hauls that vapors back to where he got the product from. So we recycle all the vapors. Inspections, while well, you're doing the monthly inspections anyway for all regulated facilities, but on gasoline, you gotta do that annual yearly inspection. Testing, if you have to do testing, you need to notify us seven days ahead of time so that we can have our inspectors out there. The stage two decommission site, if you know that you have to do every, that, that test every three years or if you're over that 100,000 gallons, remember you gotta do that vent cap test and you need to notify us seven days ahead of time. And of course, record keeping. Minimum how long? Three years. Thank you for attending this module of vapor recovery from the state of New Hampshire, Department of Environmental Services. Thank you very much for attending.